and welcome to r and Reviews Unscripted. You're here again today with the Rogers Brothers. We're just going to talk about our thoughts and reasoning behind our score ratings for the reviews that we put out. Our topic today is going to be the newly released DCEU film Shazam, starring Zachary Levi as the titular character. So we're going to take some time just to go over our feelings on that. And I think Nick's going to head this one up. Alert. If you have not seen the movie Shazam, stop listening now. So if you looked at our Facebook page, R&R Reviews, you'll see that we gave Shazam an overall rating of 5.6 out of 10 points. And let us remind you that in our rating scale, a 4 is considered watchable or passable. So a 5.6 would be above watchable into a, a more average or a little bit higher category. So one thing you notice about Shazam is that, is that it's not your typical run-of-the-mill superhero origin movie. Yes, I mean... Uh, especially for the DCEU, this is a different tone and a different feel um, as far as a more comedic touch, a lighter tone, but also in the point of view of the story. The DCEU realized with this movie that if you do take yourself too seriously, uh, it's very well possible that you're going to come off cheesy. Definitely. So we have a story told from the, a teenager's point of view, um, which you don't get very often. And I know that Spider-Man, obviously, is generally uh, told from a teenager's point of view. But this is a different feel as far as that goes. So um, you have one thing that I really love is the lack of knowledge about who he is. So he doesn't know. So the movie is him trying to figure out his powers, figure out who he is and figure out that sort of thing. So I did really like that touch. One thing I appreciated about this movie is the fact that our hero is not perfect and it very visibly shows that throughout the movie that he doesn't know what he's doing. He just doesn't instantly get this hero thing like we sometimes see often in other superhero movies. Instead of just handing it off and him just running with it, he kind of fights with it in, in, in within the storyline and the plot. He fights with this kind of hero idea and also trying to figure out who it is and what he has when he's, when he's given these powers hours he's not told anything about it he has zero knowledge he doesn't get that mentoring role from the wizard because the wizard gives him the powers and poof he's gone yes exactly so it, it gives this a very different feel for a superhero origin story which is what i think you know made it more attractive was it, it was a change up to what our traditional thought processes for these films which thinking this far into these universes you kind of have to do that or we're going to get bored one thing i did take issue with was i feel like they didn't add any extra oomph to his costume it, it was the original costume is, isn't it it's from the from the comics I believe a lot of people threw a fit when they saw early set pictures of that um, because they didn't think that, you know, that was like, why wouldn't you update his costume? I mean, come on. But I have to say on the other side of that, I think that it plays into the comedy side of what it is because the movie doesn't take itself seriously. It makes you laugh constantly. I think that the costume is part of what plays into that. So it looks more generic, more old fashioned uh, versus like a typical, you know, hardcore superhero like Superman, somebody that takes himself seriously or Batman, you know. One thing I knew we do have a conflict issue on is is the villain a little bit. I do think anybody could have played this villain. I don't think that Mark Strong's performance added anything extra to the role. But one thing Agreed. I did appreciate about the villain is that he was a genuinely dark villain. He did genuinely evil things. He was not a nice guy. He was just straight up evil and dark. I feel that. And I, I did like how they included this, you know, the seven deadly sins. That was, you know, as those villains also, that was cool in my mind, the way that they backed that up. And I'm not familiar with with Shazam comics or Shazam villains, really, if I'm being totally honest, you know. So in my mind, it's like when you're six movies down the road, are you going to remember Mark Strong's character? No, because he's a throwaway villain. You know, it's not like a Thanos. He's he is going to be somebody that we just kind of like, eh, OK, you just move on, you know, or like like uh, Thor's sister in Ragnarok. You know what I mean? She's a throwaway villain. You'll probably right. never and, see her again. And that's a flaw that many superhero movies do have is they're always trying to create these villains to wipe out in one movie and it tends to be this process of repetition and it does get old yeah for sure but wow. it's it's not just a one movie thing it's a it's an industry-wide pandemic yeah you're right and it, it's definitely in the age of superhero movies and that's kind of my comment in this review was in this age of superhero movies can we make room for shazam and i think that we can i think it's a refreshing take I agree. So we get to the end of the movie, and to defeat the villain, you know, uh, Shazam and all of the other orphans get their Shazam powers. I feel 
feel that this pulls away from the main character and what we're supposed to be focusing on. Maybe like a, a very short scene at the end where they all become it, or maybe an after credit scene. I feel like it just pulls away from, you know, Shazam and what he's supposed to be. I can I can agree to that. I also think, though, that it really plays into what the storyline was, and that was the family theme. So it was all about finding the family, and when he finally connected with the family, that's how he, you know, in the end, connects with those people and they become, you know, all one together. It'll be interesting to see how that progresses in the universe, though. Exactly, yeah. Because it, cause it's no longer a solo superhero movie. Yes, you've changed it, and they're already writing a sequel. So, overall, Shazam was a great watch. Uh, we definitely think that it's worth your view, worth your rent now if it's uh, it's coming out of theaters as we speak. Um, but that's all that we want to say about it at this time. Thank you for tuning in and listening with us. Uh, make sure that you check out our Facebook page and our YouTube page, r and Reviews. Um, you can see all of our reviews in our unscripted videos that we release. So once again, you're here with the Rogers Brothers, and this is R&R Reviews Unscripted.